Well, finds Smart, kicks it out in the corner. Grant Williams, another three! Five three-pointers for Grant Williams! No, I am. I'm Batman. Blank layups tonight that you just don't see him miss. Grant Williams again! Seventh three-pointer of the game! It's a 16-point lead! Three in a classic series between two terrific teams. YouTube. How's everyone doing? Jags to Riches, James Peters, thank you so much for your time. Wow. The Boston Celtics have done it, guys. Game seven win over the defending champ, Milwaukee Bucks. And it is just really still hard to believe. I mean, it's a 109-81 just the most convincing dominant win of this entire series and i mean they're back in the eastern conference finals and when you just take a second to think of where this team was at at the midpoint of this season it, it's baffling it really is it still is just wow what an incredible accomplishment what an incredible game seven and we're going to, you know, get to a little bit of everything. I'll go through some of the box scores. We'll obviously talk about Grant Williams. We'll talk about some of the key takeaways from the series. We've got to show some love and respect and give all the flowers and praise to Giannis. I'm going to spend some time on him. And I'll be honest, guys, you know, there's been some times I've done some skits. And I'll be honest, I was working on one. Just there's the Milwaukee fans. They've started to win me over towards the end of the series, but man, there was points, especially early on, where they were just on some weirdo shit. Like, uh, especially with Bree, like, uh, you know, our co host on Celtics Corner, like making burner accounts, attacking her, talking about her looks, even though they don't have a profile pic. It's just some wild shit. And it was just the fact, even you have the great John Corrales from Locked On, who was saying the same thing I was saying. It just seemed like these Buck fans, and not all of them, but just a certain group of them. We're going from video to video of Celtics content creators and just bombing them. So the part of me that was, you know, wants to go and just go through any of the comments of Locked On Celtics Corner. Go look in the comment sections and you'll see exactly what I mean. Go look at Bree's last video. You'll see what I mean. And um, so there's a part of me that wants to, you know, kind of you know, rub it to them a little bit. But then again, guys, um, like I said, towards the end, there was... Um, many multiple buck fans that like i said they really started to win me over we had a few guests on celtics corner uh including camille and eric um they both did a phenomenal job just when it comes to representation of a fan base and <clears throat> i guess how a fan base should look how they should act and like i said those two alone kind of won me over now they're on the technical foul podcast they are bucks fans Please go check them out. I mean, they, like I said, they, they pretty much won me over. And then a few other people in the comment sections. And then, of course, it's just Giannis. What Giannis was able to do and accomplish in this series was, it was historic. It was literally historic. It was, where is this? Giannis, first player ever. 200 points, 100 rebounds, 50 assists. I mean, we'll, we'll get into everything. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. But, I mean, just as an opening, I mean, wow. Incredible series continues for our Boston Celtics as they advance to the Eastern Conference Finals. Fourth time in the last six years, I want to say. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I want to say four out of the last six years, we're back. And, in fact, the last time we were there, bubble year, like a Miami Heat. So, this is a rematch. And there's actually, it's... You know some different pieces but very similar rosters for the most part you know the cores are pretty much the same so very very you know 
And what's special this time is we get the fans, man. Last time it was in the damn bubble. So, and that sucks. I'm, I, look, I'm a diehard Celtics fan, but I'm a Florida boy. I'm in Florida. You know, Miami is just south of me. So, you know what I mean? That's, um, and I'm surrounded by the you know, Heat fans. They're everywhere, bro. They, and they swarmed me last time. So we'll see how it goes this time. But uh, again, uh, congratulations to the Milwaukee Bucks. You guys can hold your head as high as you want because, look, last year we dealt with what you're dealing with this year. In fact, I kind of it's it's almost like the stories are very similar as as well, right? Last year, Milwaukee they go up against a juggernaut in Brooklyn that's injured. They take advantage of it in route to a finals appearance and then a championship. Boston Celtics last year are missing what their second best player. And that ends up costing our playoffs. Obviously, y'all did much better than us. I mean, we end up gentlemen sweeping the first round. But then this year, kind of the tables have turned. Celtics are healthy. Not fully, obviously, Rob Williams. But uh, facing the Milwaukee Bucks without Chris Middleton is just and their second best player, perennial all-star. He's, I know he gets heat sometimes and people give him shit for whatever reason. But it's a top 25 player. It's a you know 26 and 6 you know average and he's he kills the Celtics especially in the playoffs so not having him is just it was so much to overcome but for what the rest of that roster did coach Mike and just the coaching back and forth I mean this game seven was the first time someone actually won a back-to-back this series was just Bucks Celtics Bucks Celtics Bucks Celtics battle of adjustments excellent coaching I mean it was just I mean, it was one of those things, man. I, the Bucks have nothing to be ashamed of. They really don't have too many moves to even worry about. Get healthy, come back next year, maybe get some more shooting around Giannis. But for the most part, man, that that team has nothing to be ashamed of. They can be very proud with their season. They literally had the exact same record as the number two seeded Boston Celtics. What, 51 and 31? Correct me if I'm wrong, but... Again, congratulations to Milwaukee, but let's look at some of the details of this game seven, starting with the Boston Celtics, guys. <clears throat> You're going to hear Grant Williams, Grant Williams, Grant Williams. In fact, you might actually, you might have gotten his nickname back, huh? The Dark Knight, because he, oof, a career high, a game high, 27 points, six rebounds. He was seven for 18 from the three. The man shot eight three-pointers obviously looking at our superstar and jason tatum 23 points six rebounds eight assists seven for 14 from the field five for nine from the three jalen brown with 19 and eight marcus smart 11 7 and 10 and then my man peyton pritchard i don't actually see him but i believe he had 11 off the bench correct me if i'm wrong there guys but pretty sure peyton pritchard had oh no no, no 14 excuse me damn 14 points in 17 minutes. He was four for six from the three. Excuse me, Peyton. But showing some love and respect again to the opponent. I mean, Giannis, 25 points, 20 rebounds, nine assists. I mean, two steals, a block. Wow. Drew Holiday, 21 points, eight assists. Brooke Lopez, 15, 10, double, double. Bobby Portis with 10 and six off the bench in 22 minutes. Again, guys, when you look at when you look at the series overall for Giannis, he was averaging 35 and 15 coming into tonight. I mean, he had three out of the last four games coming in. He had 40 point performances, like including back to back, including a 44 and 20 the last game. And then he follows that up with a 25 and 20. So back to back games with 20 rebounds. He set all kinds of records, you know, first player since Shaq to do a 40 and 20. First player ever to do the 200, 150. I mean, that there's a certain group of players that you can't just help but not love. Even if he, you know what I mean? If, if it don't matter whose team they're on, you just love them. And, and Giannis is among those, you know, the Clay Thompsons, maybe Dame Lillards of the world, like that, just what they, they represent and how they've gone about their careers. <clears throat> and then obviously how badass of players they are. You cannot help but you know respect them and again Giannis he is he's somebody I rooted for last year and um you know I, I was happy when he um won his championship I, I have nothing but the utmost respect for him and he's incredible and what he just did in this series is just it's 
crazy that he literally he damn near he damn near just carried the Bucks to the Eastern Conference Finals by himself. I mean, what? The Boston Celtics. Let's let's be honest. I mean, the Boston Celtics were clearly the better team in this series. Like they were, guys. It was. It's like. Coming into it, I said the Celtics would win in five, and damn it, they should have. If you take away that game three collapse where they lost by two points, damn near got the tip in, and Tatum only had 10 points that night. Oh, and then game five, when we're on a double digit lead the entire game, and even a five point lead with less than two minutes to go, and all you got to do is make one damn play. And I'm not even talking about scoring, I'm just talking about a rebound or something, and you win and you lose. So, I mean, this. And then obviously the Celtics being down 3-2, winning back-to-back -back games, going to Milwaukee on the road in an elimination game. And Jason Tatum doing what he did is just, that is what superstars are about. And, I mean, let's talk about Grant for a second. This is a guy who, if you look at the last couple games, he had disappeared to the point where Derek White was sucking up all of his damn minutes. Like he had disappeared. Like looking at last game coming coming into tonight, last game he had two points. He was 0 for one. The game before that he had zero points. Game before that he had he was one for five. The game before that he was one for six. Like shooting wise, so you know obviously that since game two when he had that 21 and you know he was six for nine from the three. Now and I'm strictly speaking on the offensive end, not what he's done defensively. It's like we but coming into tonight it was like you even heard coach Budenholzer and Giannis they basically said that the game plan was we were going to take out Jalen Jason make it more difficult for them to score in the paint and we were going to you know make someone else and this somebody else being Grant Williams beat us Giannis straight up he in his post game presser he said um you know, we're going to give those guys, not the stars, basically, you know, a, a, an opportunity like to prove themselves. And if they do, we adjust. And if they don't like, you know, so be it. And it kind of goes back to my man sporting with Duran in the um, pregame. I mean, that brilliant, man. A lot of his a lot of what he says, you know, sometimes he can throw some hot shit in there. But the majority of his uh, takes are spot on. He kept saying, I think it was after game one. Why is everyone saying that Milwaukee is playing such great defense? Their defense is literally terrible. All the Celtics have to do is hit their damn shots. And then if you look at all of like the big, big games that we won, it was what? Like game two, six, obviously like shooting huge, huge three point performances in every one of those games. Like, I mean, there was one game we scored, what, 60 points from the three and they scored like nine. And then the other one, we scored like 50 and they scored 20. It's like. It's really hard to win in 2022 in this league the way it is when you're, you know, not hitting those type of shots, not shooting three like it, it is what it is. But, um, yeah, Grant Williams was, again, this was a career night. And he actually, it's like what Tatum said, he won us a game. Like, think of what that means. Like how Horford basically single-handedly won us game four or whatever that was, you know, brought us to the um, finish line and, you know, Tatum obviously brought us home. And then it was like last series. And that's, I think, game two where we had Grant and Daniel Tice and all those guys really like balled out. I think Tice had like 15. I think Peyton played really good off the bench. It was like all of the other guys we kept saying, they won, they won us a game that is all you can ask for these guys like the Tatums the Browns they're going to average you know for Tatum basically 28 points throughout this series for Jalen right at about 22 they're going to do that man they're these are the superstars or stars in in Browns case and it is for these guys for Grant who has disappeared the last couple nights on the offensive end to do what he did tonight it, it was in a game seven with a, with a chance to go to the Eastern Conference Finals. Wow. Incredible. Guys, the Boston Celtics are four wins away from the NBA Finals. They are eight wins away from a championship. What? <laughs> like, wow.
when you just when you say that out loud i mean that's incredible and by the way luka Doncic, 123 90 win over the phoenix suns so again no milwaukee no phoenix the two teams that were in the finals last year we are going to have a brand new finals this year boston versus golden state golden state versus miami dallas versus boston it's what a cool for, final four this is huh golden state you know come what a big bounce back year similar to boston you know what i mean kind of really underperformed last year were injured in the playoffs and then came storming back this year both with an opportunity wow that would be cool man let me take a look at some of my notes make sure oh, boston celtics again speaking of the threes it was a record setting three tonight in the game seven shooting 22. and by the way speaking on a little bit of um just the eastern conference finals i know i mentioned um four out of the last six the celtics have been to i i've read somewhere that out of the 74 total eastern conference finals the celtics are now going to 37 of them they've basically been to half of the ecfs that have ever been i, I like <laughs> what no obviously it's a historic and as a historic a franchise as it gets and some of those runs especially back in the you know the 80s before we were born um well not all of us but before i was born um probably you know like counts heavily towards that total but however shit, four out of the last six i mean it's kind of saying something too since this brad stevens into the ime adoka era i mean right shit, tatum this is what his third brown's fourth smarts fourth i mean you got some guys on this team that have been to three to four ecfs already shit together and looking at the miami heat guys it's like i said kind of a similar core with jimmy butler coming back and bam and oh my god bam and that block to win that game winning block still haunts me but who else they had duncan robinson coming back now some of new additions obviously they sent out like goran Dragic, jay crowder bringing back pj tucker kyle larry who's actually out game one already confirmed so it'll be interesting to see uh, what's up with his health even though max drews and gabe vincent and some of those other guys have been huge for them like they're they've got a really good team i actually like i said i've got a video from months ago saying why i thought this team could potentially win a championship so this will be a tough series you know what i mean I, i'm without question going to pick my Boston Celtics to win I don't think this should be as difficult a series as the Milwaukee Bucks just was and that's no disrespect to Miami this is going to be some hard fought games but I think the Celtics should be able to close this out in six God willing like if everything goes right and they don't throw you know several games away like they did in this series but who knows I mean you're talking about one of the best if not the best coach in the game and Eric Spolster a determined determined Jimmy Butler and then a really brilliant supporting cast with a bunch of guys that can shoot like lights out 40 percent plus from three one of the best centers in the game and bam so you know we'll have to see but uh only other concern for me i would say as a celtics fan it kind of goes back to when we were getting into this playoffs like early like the nets you know prediction previews I, I, what what did i say i said it wasn't that I was as concerned about playing Brooklyn in the first round. It was what playing Brooklyn in the first round, playing Milwaukee in the second round means later in the playoffs. Like now, like how much did that seven game war with the Bucks take out of us? I mean, is this not damn near like deja vu, right? 2020 bubble year, the Celtics should put away the Raptors early should have gone up 3-0 maybe winning four or five this year the Celtics should have beaten the Bucks in five six at the most right end up in a battle going seven games back and forth slugfest and oh who's there waiting for the uh, Boston Celtics in the ECF the Miami Heat so again guys we'll have to see how much did those series i mean don't forget that brooklyn series even though it was a sweep every single game was determined by single digits seven points or less like there was a one point buzzer beat i mean that's that was a hard fought series right especially how physical they've been playing these series and this is going to be another dog fight i mean think of it like the celtics just had to play the nets and the defending champ bucks whereas miami played atlanta and then 
the Sixers in half of that damn series. And Bede wasn't even, and he didn't, he missed the first two games. So it's kind of like pathways of least resistance. So we'll have to see if that plays any part. Um, again, very similar rosters to the last time they met, but obviously some noticeable differences especially with Boston when you think of the front court rotation I mean that that series it was Kemba Smart the Jays and Daniel Tice he is now our backup backup you know what I mean like I'm not sure of Rob and you'll know guys if you've stayed up to date with me at all on either channel how many times have I said I feel that if we had Al Horford in that bubble year we would have been in the finals well guess what we, have, we now have Al Horford, and he is playing at a high-ass level. So Al Horford, Rob Williams, let's see. You know, this it's not like this is a long time off. I mean, game one is Tuesday. I mean, it's about to be Monday. So it's like, and they got to travel. So, But again, I think having Al Horford and then obviously Grant throw in Derek White, those are some of the additions that we have. Obviously, we had Kimba in that series. Gordon Hayward actually came in at some point. I'm just throwing out some of the noticeable differences with the Celtics roster. But uh, again, guys, I'm sure we'll do a full preview and breakdown on Celtics corner. So it'll give me some more time to research, looking into everything and prepare for that. But I'm very excited. Um, and again, to the Milwaukee Bucks fans and to the Bucks themselves, I mean, that was an incredible instant classic, you know, the type of playoff series we'll be talking about for years to come. And the fact that you might have just seen the next great rivalry right there because does anyone not think that these two teams are going to be right up there? I mean, you might be looking that these honestly might be the two teams in the East that might, might as well have been the damn ECF right there, especially if they're healthy with Middleton, like, Ooh. So again, like, don't be surprised if we have to run this stressful last series back next year or for several more years to come. But, um, I want to thank you all so much for your time. I appreciate it. Um, to all the new subscribers, guys, we've been steadily growing. So I appreciate everyone. Thank you so much. Um, I'll continue to be consistent, try to get a little better with each video. And um, when this season ends, guys, we won't be going anywhere. But uh, wow, incredible, incredible series. Excellent job to both teams. And hey, I mean, next stop, Miami. Jags to Riches, James Peters, have an excellent start to your week, guys. Take care.